Cedric Alexander was is set to defend his Cruiserweight Championship of NXT 205 because that's might as well what it be at this point against Buddy Murphy. There was a lot of talk about this match I was hearing. Like, I was hearing a lot of stuff about it, and I hadn't taken the time to watch it until recently. Um... I looked up the reviews of it. A lot of people praised the match, saying this was Buddy Murphy's best match up until Mustafa Ali versus Buddy Murphy in their no DQ match. But, um, yeah. Uh, then I looked up on Wrestling is Over Newsletter because Dave Meltzer actually gave it a rating of a 4.25 rating star. And I was like, really? 205 Live did this? Yeah. Like, I knew Triple H was trying to salvage what Vince broke and honestly should not have been broken in the first place. But a 4.25 rating? That's kind of insane. So I decided to check it out for myself. So, after some time and some break during my vacation, I decided to go ahead and take a look at this match. Analyze it. Take a look at it. So... My concerns when they hitting into this match was the fact that, yes, this feud has been built up. However, this was taking place in his hometown. And we all know how Vince thinks about hometown heroes coming in with a title. They're basically scum to Vince. So, yeah. And commentary had noted that Alexander was wrestling in front of his friends and family tonight. Which doesn't help him because... Which, it's actually something against Alexander because of the fact that Vince hates that mentality. That the heroes has to come out victory in their hometown. And that the villains must win in this. Uh, and, but I do love how they actually built it up. Like, there was a simple storyline. Like, Buddy Murphy's trying to prove something to himself. Prove to everyone that he belongs. Especially when he had failed the way in during the built road to the Grizz Royal Rumble. Which says something. How it was at 207 instead of 205. So that match was cancelled. So it looks like he had trained himself to lose that weight. Lose a couple of pounds in order to prepare himself for this match. And I was like. <laughs> yep. This is simple storytelling. Let's do it. And they actually tried to promote this as a big fight feel. And I was like. Well oh, the, man. They're going to have a lot to go with. Like if Triple H is running the show. Then yeah. That's going to say something. And. Yeah, I had seen the match, and I was like, why is 205 Live so good? Why is this so good now? I'll tell you why. Triple H is in charge. And all I'm thinking as well is, why wasn't this like this from the beginning? This should have been from the beginning. Like, not the Vince McMahon, Kevin Dunn run 205. No, we wanted a two Cruiserweight Classic sequel vibe. Which, by the way, they got rid of their trademark for it, so they're never bringing that back for a while. So, yeah. This was for the Cruiserweight Championship, and I was hyped for this match. Looking at this build-up and whatnot, and I was all hearing all these praises, and I really did like Cedric Alexander in the Cruiserweight Classic, but Buddy Murphy, to me, had a lot to prove because I had only known him in NXT, and he was okay at best in there, even during his Golden Age period it initially had when NXT was starting out um, on the WWE Network. But, um, yeah, just like Mustafa Ali, when I had seen the No DQ match, Buddy Murphy really thrived. He's really great in this role. He's he's fast. He's he's the brute. He's able to do things that a brawler can't do to an extent. And yet he's still able to operate as a cruiserweight. And they were doing all these crazy moves against one another. That it was really fun. It was ecstatic. And I was like... Like, okay, I, I want to make 205 Live the B-Show... But I can't because the crowd is nearly emptied. And that's the major problem for me. For me, there's there's this. NXT is the A show. SmackDown Live is the B show. The C show is 205 Live and NXT UK. The reasons for that is because, one, 205 Live still has this dwindling crowd because they just want to go home after SmackDown. And lastly, NXT UK, while it hasn't aired yet at the time of this video, it has Pete Dunne, and that's just say enough. And the D show is raw. 
I would say main event, but really, who cares at this point about that show? Um, yeah, and like, I was really enjoying this match. I, and considering how this was, like, they were actually putting in all this effort to get this match working, and all this hard work and dedication to their craft, I was like, I wouldn't care if Cedric Alexander lost. Like, Normally, I would get annoyed with the whole heel has to win because he's a heel and we can't have the hero win the hometown because I'm Vince Kenny McMahon and I'm an idiot. Yes, I know I sounded weird, but I couldn't help it. But, yeah, it was insane. High-flying maneuvers, brawling styles, stiff kicks, chops. Like, yeah, that's... This is the cruise rate I've been wanting to see. Like... This is the cruise rates I remember watching in WCW when I looked on the Day Day Network, when I looked at archival footage, or the cruise rates in the early days of WWE back when, um, you know, when they had Rey Mysterio. And, but there's just this one minute nagging problem I have with this, with this cruise weight match and 205 Live in general. Whereas in the old Cruiserweight division, and even in WCW to a somewhat of an extent, they let the guys hang with the big boys, the bigger star, the bigger guys. I mean, like in WCW, that was to bury them because they were too popular, and that would be worse than death for WCW. Because it's not like Hulk Hogan was burning it to the ground with all the creative control he had, or Nash, or Hall... Or pretty much anyone who was a big name star. And then you got like... Then you got in WWE, they had the Cruiserweights down right. Like, they would compete in the Cruiserweight division, but they could also compete for the mid-card and the world title divisions. And... Yeah, that's the one... That's the second glaring omission I have with uh, 205 division or the cruiserweight division because they're not doing that. They're not letting the cruiserweights break out. Like, the only one that broke out, so to speak, was uh, Callisto, but he wasn't put in yet. Uh, Neville, but then he was transferred to the cruiserweights. And Enzo Amore, because Vince likes merchandise sales. That's the only reason. Um... Like, imagine, it, it, like, I get the feeling I right know why they don't want to put them with the big boys on Raw or SmackDown. It's because Vince is petty and he would have to make Triple H have some degree of control over Raw and SmackDown because this is his division now. But, um, yeah, moving on from that and my rambling conspiracy nonsense, this, um... This match was pure adrenaline rush. Like, yeah, there were some slow moments, but I did like the slow moments, and I liked all these stiff styles that actually actually feel like they're actually being in horrible physical pain. I'm, like, I'm not saying there never are, but, like, hearing all this crack in the air is just so refreshing to see for me. Like, even these small... Even what looks like to be the softest punch sounds so stiff and crackling. And... Yeah, and Buddy Murphy was really awesome in this match. He was, I think he's the one that everyone is trying to think because, think about it, when everyone was looking at Buddy Murphy, they just thought, he's not going to mount anything in NXT, he's tagging best with um, Blake, but um, yeah, and then afterwards he kind of just disappeared for a while, and I kind of had a hiatus from NXT tapings because they were taped and I was always spoiled about them, but um... Yeah, the fact that Buddy Murphy wasn't really amounting to anything in NXT is kind of a lost opportunity. Yeah, NXT has no has one lost opportunity beforehand, and that was Elias. When NXT didn't really utilize him to what he could be, yet in, in WWE you mean roster Bill Elias is married to something, and is even getting a debut album, I heard, which is going to be awesome. Um... Please bash John Cena a lot. I, I would love that. Uh, but, but Bunny Murphy? Yeah, I could say he was also a missed opportunity in NXT. I would have loved if he ran with the NXT title. But at the same time, 205 Live is essentially an extension of NXT to me. 
like I said, I keep wanting to call it NXT 205, and that's basically what it should be called. Because, well, Triple H is running it. We got the UK division. We got the 205 division. We might as well set up Japan and Mexico. And NXT, the main one, would have occasional crossovers with them at NXT TakeOver events and sometimes on the show. That honestly would be kind of awesome. But um, eventually, um, Bunny Murphy would feel the crushing, stinging path of defeat as... As Cedric Alexander is able to get retaliatory attacks on him, and then they went and both strung wildly like Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, but usually this, but this was at the end instead at the beginning of the match, and the fans were chanting, "This is awesome! This is awesome! This is awesome! This is awesome!" And I was like, "Wait, when was the last time I heard a this is awesome chant?" In 205. I kind of stopped watching after like what? The third episode I think. And then I watched it one more time. When Neville came back. And joined them. And I thought I was interested in that. And then they screwed that all up. So yeah. Um, this was a damn fine match. Like it was warranted to me. Of all the praise it was getting. Uh, Cedric Alexander would retain his title. And... Yeah, that, that was a pretty fun match. It was awesome. It was adrenaline pumping when it got really exciting. It was slow in the right places. It was fast in the right places. I can't find one thing wrong with it. I'm mean, like, you can still make the argument that Buddy Murphy should have won, but like, that's always going to be subjective since in it. And since when Triple H is seemingly writing the show, it's like, no one feels like they lost anything. Really, it feels like they're gaining something even in defeat. Just like I think of New Japan and Ring of Honor. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I man, I, I'll be watching this a little bit more and turning, tuning in more. I might be chatting up on Cedric Alexander versus Hideo or Tommy, but yeah, this is this is a good time to watch 205 Live. It's pretty neat. So those were my thoughts on Cedric Alexander versus Buddy Murphy for the Cruiserweight Championship. This was Neo Reality on 2. If you like, comment, subscribe, and donate to 2 for more.